I'm Arunima from Knit and Otter and in this video I'm going to show you how to make the turquoise fiesta shawl. I've used two uh, two skeins of yarn to make that shawl. One is a uh, Craft Smart solid in color turquoise and one skein of the Craft Smart ombre in color fiesta. And uh, you could make this with any uh, combination of colors and uh, with any yarn pretty much by uh, with with an appropriate hook i used an eight millimeter hook with that yarn but again if you use if you choose to use different yarn uh, you could use uh, an appropriate hook for that yarn and the pattern would still remain the same i think this will uh, look great with any combination of colors the possibilities are endless and um, let's jump right in for the purpose of this video I am NOT using the same yarn uh, as the one in the pattern but uh, it is similar weight yarn uh, I'm using a different size hook as well but as I said you could use any yarn with an appropriate size hook and the pattern will still remain the same so let's start with row one Uh, pick your color C1 and chain 2. So this is my color C1 and I'm going to chain 2. 1, 2. And make the foundation row stitches. Um, it says in the back loop in the pattern it doesn't really matter for this pattern but I generally like to make my foundation stitches in the back loop. Uh, I have a separate tutorial for how to make the foundation row and different options. Uh, you're welcome to check that out. But um, going back to the pattern, uh, the first row has two chains. So there will be two loops on your hook after the end of the forward pass. And um, you have to stop here because the return pass is made with a different color. So the technique that's used in this uh, pattern is with every row uh, you will change color on the return pass so I'll show you how to do that again I have a separate tutorial for just that if you want to take a look so I'm not going to go into the details of how to do it but I'm going to show you how to make this shawl using that technique so for the return pass you pass you join so for the return pass, you join your color C2 and that's how you do it and yarn over and pull through two loops. So you have to make sure that you do not pull this loop to a close. Just leave it as it is a little loose. You can see that this entire first row is made with the color C1. Now row two. For row two, you need to make the forward pass with the color C2. So this is my C2 and make a Tunisian full stitch in every space between the stitches of the previous row. So um, again, I have a separate tutorial to explain how to make Tunisian full stitches. Uh, I'll, I'll include a link in the description below for all the tutorials that are mentioned in this pack in this video. But um, so a full stitch is made between two stitches so in this case this is the first stitch this is the second stitch and this is the space between the two stitches so that's that's where i'm going to make my full stitch and this is just going to be one full stitch and then uh, i need to make the last stitch so for the last stitch we usually pick up to the two vertical bars from the previous row last stitch but in this case because of this join we don't have that so I'm just going to pick up the one that we do have yarn over pull through so you see that you will have three loops on this on the hook in this row this is one more than what you had in the previous row which was two and now we have three now for the return pass you join C join C1 so you just leave this in the back bring 
your C1 forward, take it, chain one, and yarn over, pull through two, all the way to the beginning. So this is how it's looking in the beginning. You won't really see much of a pattern just yet, but let's keep going and you will start to see the pattern build up. Now row three with C1, make a full stitch in every space between the stitches of the previous row, except for the last one. So here we have three stitches, one, two, three. There is this one space and the second space here. So according to the instructions, you just make a full stitch in the first one and not in the last one. So I'm going to make a full stitch here and then I'm going to make a last stitch and now for the last stitch I do have those two vertical bars but they're just of two different colors. So I'm going to yarn over pull through and now the number of stitches in my forward uh, loops on my hook at the end of the forward pass is three. So that's one, two, three. That is the same as the previous row and I'm going to now leave that in the back pick up my C2 and chain one. Again, I'm gonna pull this a little, pull my C1 a little, so this last stitch is not too loose, but I'm not going to close that stitch. So it's still going to be there. It's just, I've tightened it to, match the length of the other loops uh, and then yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two the next row says row four to the one row to one row before the last row it says repeat rows two and three so now let's repeat row two now with c2 with C2 make a Tunisian full stitch in every space so this one two and then the last stitch by picking up these two loops here so in now we have one stitch more than the previous row so we had three in the previous row and now we have four to make the reverse pass, I'm going to pick up my C1, chain, yarn over pull through two, yarn over pull through two, and yarn over pull through two. Now I have to repeat row three, which is make a full stitch in every space between the stitches of the previous row, except for the last one. So I now have four stitches here. So I have one, two, three, four. So I'm going to make a full stitch here, here. So that's two full stitches and I'm going to skip the last one. So there will be two full stitches and the last stitch here. And the number of stitches are four. This is the same as the number of stitches as the previous row. So to now make the return pass, I leave that yarn behind. I pick up the, I pick up C2, chain one, yarn over, pull through two, all the way. And I'm going to continue doing this. So I'm going to continue repeating rows two and three uh, until I reach the desired length of my scarf, uh, of my shawl. So. Um, I'll just make a few more rows for you to see. So this is again repeat row two where I make a full stitch in every space. So it's a very easy to remember. You would always have a full stitch in every space with color C2 and with color C1 you would always skip the last uh, that that there would not be a full stitch in that last space there. So if you are in the middle of working on something and or 
if you're watching TV while making this, you don't have to look at which row you're on. You can just look at the color that you're working with and you can figure out whether you need to make a repeat of row two or a repeat of row three. So now I'm with my color C1. So there is no full stitch in the last uh, loop. So this is a repeat of row three. And So you can start seeing a little bit of a pattern there. Uh, the purples are lining up on top of the purples and the white is lining up on top of the white. Um, this is white again. So this is my C2. I make a full stitch in all the stitches. Last stitch and pick up C1. And over pull through two and then continue repeat of row three So you can see this pattern building up and you can see that these these last stitches over here they line up with the color that was on that row so the purple lines up with the purple the white with the white i'm going to make a few more rows here so you can see how it shows up um, uh, how it looks after a few rows Here it is. This is how it looks and I can keep going and with every two rows you will add another stitch and that will create this this angle here and that will make sure that you get a triangle shawl in the end. Um, the beauty of this pattern is that you can keep going all the way until you want to. You can stop when you've uh, achieved the desired size of your shawl or you could stop when you run out of yarn. That's what I did once I ran out of one skein. That is when I ended my pattern, and, uh, ended my shawl, and um, I just, uh, that that was a good enough length for me. But I could have potentially added more yarn or I could have switched colors. Like you could add a different color here. Instead of using purple, you could use a different color or you could use a completely different combination of two colors here. I... I think you can do a bunch of stuff with this um, with this pattern. So if you look at the back, uh, you see horizontal lines here. They're vertical lines. So this is a reversible pattern. You can wear it both ways. Uh, I think it'll look great both sides. And now, so I'm now going to assume that I have reached the end of my shawl, and this is how I. Uh, 
this is how I want it. This is how long I want it. Uh, this is a miniature version, yes, but it will be very similar to this towards the end of your shawl. It just be a lot larger number of stitches, uh, but they will look like this. So this is the last row. So I am going to make a full stitch in every stitch of uh, every space uh, in every space between stitches of the previous row but I, I'll go on and bind off as I go so I'm going to bind off using slip stitches so I'm going to do full stitch and then slip full stitch slip and keep going until you reach that last stitch make your last bind of stitch in that last stitch and that's it you just you cut your yarn you cut your yarn and you will uh, will cut both of these and you will um, at this point uh, weave in ends and that's it so Another really good thing about this shawl is that you only, you will, if you end up using two skeins of yarn, you will only have four ends to weave in at the end. And that is one of my, um, that is one of those things that I really don't like doing. So I love it when there are less yarn uh, ends to weave in. So there'll just be four at the end of this shawl. Uh, if you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out to me. And um, at this point, you just have to block your shawl. Um, with mine, I steam blocked it. Uh, this one is cotton yarn. It is holding up really well. I would have probably um, not blocked it or just done a water block. So depending on the yarn that you've used, you can go ahead and block your shawl. I highly recommend doing that. Uh, and that's about it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my other tutorials. Bye-bye.